you're feeling down and out, like the world has forgotten you, come and see your sober homies. Take their hand, my friend. We got you. And get a bowl of soup. I guarantee it's made with love. And the love we put into it comes straight from up above. My name is Jason Bourgeois. I'm 39 years old. I'm originally from Prince George, BC. I've been in Edmonton about half my life. It's going to make it about uh, getting people early in recovery, meeting each other. Um, one of the hurdles that I've noticed in early recovery is meeting other sober, like-minded people. And also um, part of recovery is um, giving back to the community and uh, practicing altruism and getting out of yourself and, and um, doing good deeds. It's, uh, I find it's good for my recovery and uh, helps me. Uh, it's just the right thing to do. So I, I created a group where I can kind of get uh, hit two birds with one stone, um, get people meeting each other and also doing volunteer work. So, uh, My name is Waylon Desjardins. Uh, originally from Saskatchewan, I moved to Edmonton, Alberta about 22 years ago. I'm a full-time addiction support worker. Uh, we started Sober Homies. It's been about six months now. I met Jason through uh, Facebook. We crossed paths a few times throughout the city, throughout our partying lives. He came to me because he knew that I had prior experience within a, the volunteer organizations. He wanted to start Sober Homies and he basically just reached out and I offered what I knew. I had fun doing it and started out as just a, it was supposed to be just a one meal thing that we were gonna put together. And now we serve uh, high-risk society uh, weekly every Sunday we are out you know giving back food blankets and clothing yeah it's been great my name is Nick I'm from originally from Calgary Alberta uh, I've lived in Edmonton for the last two years I'd started drinking at a young age I was uh, 12 years old when I started drinking um, I got into heavy drug use um, by the time I was 19 um, I was a heavy drug user for 20 years. You know, I lost I, I lost everything through addiction. I lost my my kids and I lost my home and and eventually I was on the streets. Hi, my name's Sarah. I'm born and raised in Edmonton. So I spent the majority of my life uh, in addiction. My addiction started about 12. Um, I just got sober. I've been sober for 97 days today. My addiction started off with alcohol, and then towards the end, uh, was uh, I was addicted to crack cocaine. I was actually homeless not that long ago, this past summer. Um, I was living in my car, and then when my car was gone, I was staying at the Hope Mission. Yeah, this volunteering means a lot to me. Uh, I relate a lot to, obviously, the addiction part and the mental health part. It's part of my story, part of who I am. My name is Ashton and originally I'm from Pulse First Nation. Kind of my story is I was down into the trenches of addiction, living in 10 cities throughout the city of Edmonton, um, off and on throughout my, my uh, upbringing uh, in my teenage years. And I got into involved with crime. I got involved with gang associations, uh, drug dealing and, and of all that sorts. And I ended up losing myself in the midst of everything. So I've been, uh, I've been sober for almost uh, 1,300 days, just a little bit over. No longer do I have to wake up feeling, you know, just that suffering pain, you know, um, where I'm gonna get uh, my next fix or anything like that. You know, one of the benefits of being sober is I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. I don't have to worry about waking up, you know, sick or, you know, sleeping outside and all that stuff, because that's where my addiction took me was uh, living down in the trenches in 10 cities and feeling cold and hungry and in pain. And, you know, recovery has taken all that away from me. And so I had a little bit of experience in, uh, you know, serving with the homeless, meeting with them, talking, talking with them. And so when Jason had presented and offered it towards me, I just jumped right on. <laughs> My name is Lee Van Beaver. I was born in Slave Lake, uh, raised in Edmonton. I've been here since 1985. I come from a long line of drinkers, uh, both alcoholic parents. Uh, my first few years in Slave Lake, I was raised in a, uh, in a trailer park. I started drinking when I was 13. It had its grips on me, you know, when, uh, when I started drinking, I could finally be myself, it felt like, you know. You know, I got into harder drugs by the time I was 18, 20, you know, 25. 
I was uh, doing everything, all the club drugs, going back out to the streets, you know, because uh, that's what was kind of like raised me, was the streets and, uh, you know, street life, thug life, you know. But I never gave up hope. I always knew that I was going to get sober someday, but uh, I didn't know when. Okay, so uh, my name is Brian, but you can call me Bry Guy. That's what everybody calls me. And uh, I've been in Edmonton for, well, it's coming up a couple years now. I'm from um, Ontario. At a pretty young age, I had my first drinks. And then it wasn't before long before, you know, cocaine showed up into the picture. And then, and then cocaine became like a, a, like a kind of like a weekend type thing, so to speak. But as I got a little bit older, and then the first time I tried crack cocaine, every line in the sand that I said I would never cross, I ended up crossing them, you know. And uh, I was powerless over it. The day that I found out that I was gonna have a child, we were picking up a chunk of crack. He came into the world, we were still hooked on, on crack. And uh, just just powerless, you know. And, and when my son was three years old, I lost custody of him. But that's, uh, that, that was a while back. 10 months clean, I got involved with, the, in, with a girl who was still in active addiction. And lo and behold, I never made it back to the rooms for another 13 years. And in that span of time, I, got, I went from smoking crack to uh, using crystal meth and then, and then, and you know, and fentanyl. I, I died, I've died five times on fentanyl. I was in jail for a bunch of, uh, you know, crime related things. And I did whatever I had to do. I was homeless, I was on the streets, and I was stealing and doing a whole bunch of different kinds of crime just to get more dope. I didn't, I didn't even care about finding a place to live. I just cared about my next bag of dope. Since becoming sober, I have more balance in my life. In no homelessness and addiction, I was unable to see my kids. Becoming sober, I, I have a job now, and uh, you know I'm able to to be with my kids, and my family respects me more now than from when I was uh, in addiction. Working with sober homies really helps me to give back for when I knew know that I was in their situation, and uh, I've I've been there. I've been with the sober homies since the beginning. Uh, what I'd like sober homies to eventually become is, you know, more access to more people. Um, there's a very high homeless population in Edmonton. Maybe, you know, if eventually it could be or a couple nights a week that we serve people, or I just I'd like to see it grow because they're the homeless community in Edmonton is it's out of control. There is supports out there for for people in addiction. Um, they just got to know where to look and and you just gotta wanna do it for yourself. So nobody else is gonna get you sober except for yourself. That's how I did it, and that's how I stay sober today. Two years clean now, I hope for many years more. I'm back in my son's life. I have a nine-year-old son. Recovery is possible. Uh, service work has been like a really big part of my recovery. That's why the Sober Homies thing is, is a big deal for me. Me and my friend Megan, we both live in sober living together. We kind of took on like the, the clothing portion of the uh, mission hall so we collect donations from different people uh, clothing gloves hand warmers shoes boots feminine hygiene products and um, socks and underwear we've had like garage sales and stuff like that to raise money during the winter like we go through 60 pairs of gloves a, a service it's nothing and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully the word gets out there and we can get more people donating and especially in these winter months people are so cold and um, we just we don't we don't have enough donations coming in to make sure that people are dressed warm enough to survive out there the foundation is still people being sober and meeting other sober people but um, we would like to make it bigger than that and obviously spread to other cities so that they can also give back to their communities as well donations volunteering anything helps donating a dollar helps because uh, yeah there's a lot of people out there that need help back in 20 2019 is, is when I eventually gave my life over and I just I just had enough I got down to my hands and knees in the North Saskatchewan River and I cried out to God you know to creator and just asking for to, to 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 give me a second chance at life 
and uh, it was a feeling that I've never experienced ever in my life. One thing that I've really wanted was to be myself. And I eventually obtained that after what, almost three and a half years. I had did, done a lot of work on myself and figuring out getting to the core root of my problems. And that's where I find is where a lot of people w would find growth, is getting to the core root of their issues and why they decided to use in the first place, which I eventually had done. And you know, recovery has brought freedom in my life, where I can actually be myself. And that's one of the greatest gifts that I found in recovery. So my buddy Jason in, in recovery had decided to uh, to create a group, an outreach group uh, service, uh, serving our homeless brothers and sisters on the street. Prior before that, I had a little bit of experience in serving with my father in the, in the trenches of uh, throughout the pandemic. My overall message is, uh, especially when, when it comes to serving, um, serving our homeless brothers and sisters is just overall um, the feeling of joy of just seeing that spark in someone else's eye. You know, every minute that we're out there, every minute that we're putting in into either making our, our baked goods or our soups and whatnot, is being able to, to see that sense of happiness in someone else's eye. I think, you know, that's, that's what makes all, all the difference, for sure. It just really makes every minute worth it. That so sense of happiness, that sense of that somebody's there for them and, it, and that can care for them. I just got back myself again for uh, the last eight months. I've been uh, clean and sober. I didn't plan to get sober. I, I, I didn't plan to have like a, a moment of clarity. It just happened, right? Finally realizing that I was power, powerless over it and, and instilled me with power to do something about it. And the rest is history. I mean, uh, I'm still working on my steps. I'm still sober. I'm helping other people get sober. You know, I do service. This is one of my favorite times when I do service is when I come to serve on the unfortunate, I guess, because I, I was there too. I was in their shoes. I walked miles, many miles in their shoes and many different times in my life. And when I got sober, that's when everything started to become manageable. I can manage having a job and keeping a job. I can manage paying my rent. I can manage buying my groceries. And I, I pray for clarity and uh, guidance every day. You know, so that I can uh, not only help myself, but be other, be help to others too. I just want to be a productive member of society. I'm proud of the job that I have these days. I, I do a concrete job, which means I'm building buildings, which means I am a productive member of society. I'm helping build this city at, at the same time too, right? It pays me well, well enough so I can make donations, well enough so I can do service work, that I can give back so much, you know, for something that was so freely given to me, you know? And it was not just given to me, but the opportunity was given to me. The opportunity to change my life for the better was given to me. You know, all I had to do was reach out and take it, but I had to want it first. I got released into a sober living facility, and it was really a blessing. I, I probably would have gone back out there, you know? And, and that's kind of where Sober Homies comes into play is, you know, I'm a brother who's walked down the same path as the people that, that we're serving. And, and, and our hope is always that, that, you, that they could have that transformation too. But real service is helping you know, the, the people that are real in need of it. And, and, and in Edmonton, there's such a, a, a dire situation for, for the homeless, you know, not only through drug addiction and, and alcoholism, but just uh, mental health and, and a whole bunch of other things, you know. And so, yeah, there's a real need for it. And, uh, it's good, just good to give back, it feels good. Giving back to others, that's really uh, what I would say is, is one of the great things about being, being sober and, and having freedom from addiction. Feeding the homeless is one thing, but helping the homeless get their foot back into society is the real goal when this world is so upside down. Uh, people like uh, uh, these random acts of kindness really go a long way. Raised in a a rough environment of where substance use was pretty big on our where I was where I'm from. 20 years off of hard drugs and about 10 years off of alcohol. One of the main reasons why I became sober is for my children. Got sick of them being disappointed in me and always drinking every time I came back from work. I used to work on the rig. And I wasn't spending any quality time with my family, so I learned to 
be a better parent, right? Be more self-aware, be more self-understanding. And I really enjoyed, the, you know, just being sober, right? Over time, it just became a natural way of life for me now. So now I, you know, spend my time teaching ways to cope to our younger generation, try to be a better overall person, parent, and, you know, try to be a support to those that need it, right? Just having all the connections within the volunteer agencies, non-for-profits, has brought us to this level of where we're at now. Being here for the people is my main goal right now. Try to make a difference. Sober Homies has been doing and trying to do, and progressively we want to expand and offer it in a more group setting. Obviously there was a lot of challenges in trying to maintain my sobriety, but overall, everything has become better. I don't see my challenges as a struggle anymore. I see them as a blessing and a reason to wanna pursue life and to pursue being a better person. I wake up with a smile on my face more than I used to. I don't have a lot of self-doubt. I don't carry a lot of anger or negative trauma from my childhood anymore. I've learned how to you know, be there for people by addressing myself and my issues that have been putting me through the cycle of being lost within addiction. I have learned that I had to mentally and emotionally change myself for the better and heal so that I could, you know, become a sober homie and, you know, be there for my homies. <laughs> I guess you could say I kind of had a, a rough upbringing. I, my childhood was a little unstable and unfortunate. I, I never knew my father and my mom had issues with alcohol and I was in foster care by the time I was three. It created a lot of uh, feelings of inadequacy and, and wondering why I'm not uh, like normal people or I felt less than. And that translated into a lot of behavior and attitude problems. It wasn't long before I was heavily using drugs and alcohol and, and, and doing crime and stuff in my teenage years. And um, yeah, I pretty much got carried away in, in drugs and alcohol. Most of my 20s and some of my 30s was spent uh, addicted to drugs in jail, in and out of jail constantly, in and out of the hospital constantly, and just living a life that I thought, uh, thought that's what I was worth. I thought that's who I was. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with how I was living, and um, I didn't like who I was. So I started giving the idea of sobering up some thought, and I've since made some changes. I've been clean and sober since April 3rd of 2020. So I've been sober for, yeah, just uh, just do it. It's just, it's scary, and it feels lonely at times, but uh, there's a whole group of us that want to help you, and uh, we got your back. Um, that's what the Sober Homies is about. It's about uh, people early in recovery that don't know a lot of other sober people. So we just uh, you know, take our hand and we'll, 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 uh, we'll walk with you. And, um, and we can do a good deed along the way. Originally, a few, four of us got together and we just wanted to go do a good deed. So I, I, I cooked a pot of soup and my friend made some sandwiches and we, we went out onto the street and, and, and handed it out. And then um, I made a Facebook page and next thing you knew, it just grew. It blew up very fast. Um, it got a lot of members and it wasn't long before it is what it is now um do god service work you know take care of his people that are struggling and uh because a lot of us have been there a lot of us have lived on the streets have been in and out of jail have battled with poverty and just it's a lot of us have been there so we know what it's like to get something when you need it and it's just a, it's just a good thing to do and it feels good on it's it's everybody wins so just to have somebody give you a clean pair of socks and a, a bowl of soup and a piece of bannock and a sandwich it, it, it doesn't, might not mean much to us, but it means the world to them. The people are very appreciative and very grateful for what we do. Just the seeing those smiles on their face, and uh, that's payment in itself on our end. We're volunteers and we collect donations from in the group. We're self-supporting through our own contributions. I was taking a brunt of the financial stresses early. Me and Layla have been putting in a lot of, of our own money. Um, yeah, we've been uh, just self-supporting, doing our own thing, and uh, I can't thank the donators enough. Um, without them, we wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, it's basically just a volunteer group for people that want to give back. It's a great place to start your recovery journey. Um, a lot of us have months or years of sobriety behind us, so we can mentor you and we'd love to be friends, help you walk, walk you through the difficulties of uh, early recovery. Practicing altruism and giving back is huge in building your self-worth and your, uh, your self-esteem. It just helps you sleep better at night knowing that you did something good and it's just all around win-win.
we'd love to have you guys on board and, and come join us we're here but yeah i'm just trying to do a good thing i'm trying to uh like i said leave a lasting spiritual footprint behind and uh um, maybe be a, a light for other people to do the same thing um i would love to see a you know red deer sober homies winnipeg sober homies you know just uh um, someone to be like yeah, i can do that some green crabs and some purple crabs are all stuck in the same space trying to climb out and move on to a better place. One crab gets a claw up and is on his way to succeed. Just know that green crabs and purple crabs are a very different breed. Green crabs envy and resent any other crab trying to get out, so they will grab and pull the other down. That's what green crabs are about. I see these attitudes and behaviors, and it makes me stop and wonder, why not help each other out instead of drag each other under? Now purple, is the color of royalty, and purple crabs behave that way. They are encouraging, positive, and respectful in how they act and what they say. A purple crab will give their own back to help another get up and out. Be the change and do unto others is what purple crabs are about. I'd like you to look in the mirror to reflect and think, which color crab are you? And know that a green crab can change to purple. We can all be purple too.